a lever crane just here. No sign whatsoever of it now and I used to drive it on overtime occasionally and when I did drive it, it was a thrill to drive. Uh, I know as you went over to the far side of the ship to pick a container out, as you took the weight of it, you'd feel it all lift, you know, and you, you'd wonder, is it going to go over? But a thrill nevertheless. The port of Preston, although it has been trading since the 18th century, really dates from 1893, when the present Albert Edward Dock, with its locks and entrance basin, was opened. This new wet dock, together with the building of training walls to confine and deepen the Ribble's navigable channel, led to an increase in trade, which has continued steadily ever since. Modernization and cooperation have led to the port being the next largest municipally owned port authority after Bristol. The dock is extremely well planned and equipped to handle all types of cargo and the excellent berth layout enables goods to be handled direct to or from rail, road vehicles or transit sheds. During recent years, modernization programs have been carried out so that the dock's mile and a half of keys are served by modern electric and diesel-driven cranes that can handle all types of commodities, including bulk cargoes. Trading has increased greatly in recent years, and exports and imports exceed 2 million tons annually. Wood pulp, timber, coal, petroleum and oils, paper, sulfur, bananas, and many other cargoes are handled. Preston has links with many parts of the world, including Scandinavia, Russia, and the West Indies. One of the biggest improvements made to ships in recent years has been the installation of McGregor automatic steel hatch covers, which have been developed since 1945. These not only help to make ships safer by keeping badly damaged vessels afloat and so saving life, cargo and ships, but make cargo handling more efficient and so reduce turnaround time spent in port. The effectiveness of this British enterprise is shown by the fact that today over 7,000 ships have been fitted with McGregor hatches. They have been accepted internationally and we may say that with their coming a new era in sh ships design was born. The most important feature in the growth of Preston as a port has been the development of roll-on, roll-off and lift-on, lift-off container load services to and from Ireland, and in this Preston was a pioneer. In May 1948, Colonel Buster commenced the transport ferry service with a converted tank landing craft of about 300 tons, making one sailing weekly, and from that small beginning has grown traffic which for transport ferry service alone involves over 30 sailings a week from Preston to Ireland with a vast assortment of goods. Returning from Ireland, the containers are loaded with food and other products from Irish farms. Transport ferry service claim that their containers and floats can be loaded with anything from peanuts to prefabricated factories, whilst low loaders carrying heavy machinery, refrigerated vehicles for perishable goods, and tankers for bulk liquids can be driven on to their roll-on, roll-off ships of which there are nine sailings weekly. It is essential that these vessels and those carrying containers come into Preston on one tide and sail again on the next, so that each ship is in harbour for about five hours only, in which time it must be discharged and loaded again. 
The work must be highly organized so that no time is lost. The motto, slash time in port, is heeded by all concerned. Perhaps the most exotic items dealt with in Preston Dock are bananas and citrus fruits, which are imported by Geest Industries from the Windward Islands in the West Indies, in particular the islands of St. Lucia and Dominica. The bananas are picked green from the trees and are still green when they reach this country. About 6,000 stems are unloaded from the ship in a four-hour shift into railway wagons to be conveyed into ripening chambers in various parts of England and Scotland. The banana trade commenced in 1952 and has grown greatly since then, although some difficulty has been experienced as the draft of ships involved has increased. It has been found troublesome to dredge a channel for the larger vessels, but the bananas are still imported by the smaller ships in the company's fleet. A more recent innovation is to load the bananas into containers, which are then transported to the ripening chambers by road. Lancashire has a large paper-making industry and most of its factories are supplied with wood pulp which is imported into Preston from the Baltic, the Scandinavian countries. The wallpaper which decorates your room, the newsprint upon which your newspaper is printed, the stationery upon which you write your letters, all may have started their lives as wood pulp manufactured from trees growing in some dark Norwegian forest and shipped across the North Sea to Preston. Cold and dull though the bales of wood pulp may appear, the skill of Lancashire workmen transforms them into rolls bearing glowing patterns or sheets printed with news of success and disaster at home and abroad or into many other everyday uses. Preston is regarded as the premier wood pulp port and a very large proportion of wood pulp brought into this country passes through its docks, which are thus a vital link between the pulp mills abroad and the British paper-making industry. Despite all the new developments in the fuel industry, coal supplies still remain vital, and Old King Coal reigns yet in Preston docks. Wagons carrying between 13 and 15 tons of coal are turned on this magic roundabout so that their doors face the ship for loading. Coal mined in Lancashire or Yorkshire is sent to homes in Northern Ireland, and coal for electric power stations is also exported. Much of it is sent from the Wigan area or Yorkshire to electricity generating board at Yelland near Bristol. It is essential that ships carrying these cargoes be loaded very carefully as they must remain on an even keel in order to navigate the difficult river there. In a shift of four hours about 1,000 tons of coal are dealt with including trimming and leveling.
For many years, sawn timber has been a staple import, and ships from Russia, Scandinavia, and Canada are frequent visitors with their cargoes of mainly softwood. Some firms prefer their supplies of timber to be discharged straight from the ship onto the company's vehicles. But extensive storage facilities exist both open and covered. Discharge, sorting, stacking and delivery can all be carried out without delay and there is an extensive local trade in wood products including house timbers, covered framings and roof trusses. being handled is arsenic, which is another import from Scandinavia, and although it is highly poisonous, it has many non-poisonous uses, and is indeed, strangely enough, in several types of medicine. It may also be found in your daily bread. Discharged and loaded again, the transport ferry service vessel Bardic Ferry returns on its journey down the Ribble to Ireland and yet another turn round. <laughs> 